Today, using Apple Motion, we're going to create this portal effect, and it's all made possible by Envato Elements. Really quick, this tutorial was getting way too long, so I don't actually show the appearance effect at the beginning. So if you want a tutorial on that, make sure you let me know down below and I'll make sure that gets on the channel. The first thing is first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna select the Motion Project. You can set these settings to whatever you like for your particular video, and then we'll push Open. So I'm gonna bring in two shots from Envato Elements to pull off this effect. So I'm gonna push Command, I, and we're gonna to locate these two shots and import those. So we have this beautiful shot walking on the beach and then we also have this shot of kind of going through these castle ruins. Now you'll notice that these two shots actually have a similar walking pace which is why this effect happens to work. So just keep that in mind if you ever want to pull off this effect to just have two shots that are kind of going at the same speed. With the small cabin shot I'm going to push command left bracket and that's going to drop it down in the layer group. Then selecting the footage of the walls we're going to go up to fill filters, motion VFX, and M Tracker 3D. Then I'm just gonna push track. Now I am using M Tracker 3D, but that doesn't mean you can't follow along with this tutorial. Everything after M Tracker 3D is completely doable in Apple Motion without any plugins. If you do wanna pick up M Tracker 3D, there is an affiliate link down below, but this video is obviously not sponsored by motion VFX. So M Tracker 3D just finished tracking. All we're gonna do is move forward in our timeline until about where we want this door to be. Then we're gonna select this icon here and that's going to allow us to click in the frame where we want the orientation to be. I'm going to push shift so that it's completely straight up and down and then we'll just create a point right there. So now if we play back and forth we can see how solid our track is and it looks like it's really really solid. So now that we have our orientation set I can actually click on this icon then we can go into our library and locate our favorites menu. In here you'll see the camera and 3D group. I'm just gonna click and drag those into our layers. It's gonna ask if I wanna switch our old layers over to 3D, but we actually wanna keep those to 2D. So I'm gonna push keep as 2D. So now that we have our tracking done, we can get to adding the portal. We're gonna go ahead and select this 3D group. Then we're gonna move forward in our timeline until we're about where we want the doorway to be. Then we're going to select the Bezier tool and you can get that with B. Then we're just gonna click and create the basic shape of the door that we want for our portal effect. After that we'll go into our inspector and disable the outline. So if we play through we can see how well that's locked into our footage and it looks like it's pretty good but we'll go ahead and lift up the lower edge just a little bit. I also might go into the properties of the bezier and drag that up just a little bit in the y-axis so that it's not clipping into the ground. So this bezier shape is going to be the main driving factor of the portal. It's gonna be important you name these because we're gonna have a lot of layers by the end. So I'm just gonna call this the mask layer. After that, we're gonna select the footage of our walls and we're going to right click and select add image mask. Now we're gonna use this mask to actually cut out a hole in that footage. So we'll go ahead and click and drag the mask onto the image mask layer and you'll see that it's actually created a cutout of our original footage. But we don't wanna actually see the beach footage just yet. So what we will do is select our image mask and we're going to invert that mask. So now we have a cutout going through the door. But you'll notice that once I get to this point, all of a sudden the original footage kicks in and that's because we're actually going through the mask completely. So we'll go back just a few frames, selecting the old wall footage, I'll push O to trim that down. So now we can fly all the way through the door seamlessly. With our mask selected, we're gonna push K and that's going to create a clone layer. What's really cool about the clone layer is if I decide on this mask to change the shape completely, you'll see how that actually affects the clone layer as well. But I can apply effects individually to that clone layer that won't affect the original shape layer. So with this clone layer enabled, we'll go on up to filters, we'll go to border and select stroke. Now the stroke is a relatively new filter, so if you don't have this filter, you might need to update motion. From there, let's go ahead and change the stroke color over to a nice neon blue. And then we're gonna locate the hide source button. Go ahead and enable that. So now we should just have this outer edge happening around our mask. Now it's not quite lining up perfectly. So all we need to do is change the position onto centered and then we can actually adjust the offset just a little bit. That way our edge is directly wherever the mask is cutting out. Let's go ahead and rename this to be Edge Glow. Then we'll go up to our filters, we'll go down to Glow, 
and we're going to select neon. We can go ahead and adjust our outer glow. I like to bring the outer glow way up and then we can adjust our outer brightness according to taste. This is gonna be completely up to you how you want your video to look, and I'll get it somewhere in there. So now that we have this neon effect, we should be having something that looks just like this, which in my opinion looks really, really cool. But we can take it even a step further. I wanna add some turbulence on the actual edge. Selecting that edge glow layer, we're gonna push K to create another clone layer. This time we're just gonna call it displacement. Then from there, we'll go on up into our filter Filters, distortion and select the bump map. Now what we need is a cloud layer to drive this bump map. So we'll go over into our library, we'll go to our generators and locate the clouds. I'm just gonna click and drag this over into our layers pane and I'm gonna disable 3D just so it's not taking up any extra processing power. Then we'll go into our inspector and I'm going to adjust the width to just be 1080. That way it's just a perfect square. Now I adjusted that to be 1080 so that it's actually taking up, again, less processing power because this particular effect can take a lot on your computer. Then we can drag our horizontal scale and our vertical scale down. So now that we have this cloud effect, I actually want these clouds to be rising. So let's find our offset parameter. You'll see that I am adjusting the Y parameter and it's sliding it up and down. We'll go to the right, click, on this down arrow, we'll select add a parameter behavior and we're gonna select rate. Now we can set an actual rate that, that number is continuing to increase by. So let's go ahead and set this to something like 0.3 so it's a little bit slower. Then what we can do is go back into our cloud settings and we can adjust stuff like our gradient. We can add a little bit more contrast to it. We could also adjust the speed setting and that's the evolution speed. So you'll see how it's actually shifting through the different clouds very, very quickly. So now that we have our clouds set up, we can disable them so we don't have to look at them anymore. Then we're gonna find our bump map and click and drag the clouds into the bump map. And you'll notice now that on the edge, it's actually creating this really cool displacement effect on our neon glow. We can increase the amount a lot if you want a really crazy looking effect. It's totally up to you how much you want. You can also adjust the direction. And that is looking pretty good to me. So now that we've done that, I wanna apply some settings to the video inside so that it looks like it's actually being affected by the portal. So we'll go ahead and locate the small cabin shot from Envato Elements. We'll go up to filters, we'll go down to distortion, and we are going to select refraction. Now with refraction selected, I'm gonna click and drag these clouds into the refraction layer. And you'll actually see how the refraction is affecting the layer underneath which looks really, really nice. Now that we've done that, as we enter into the portal, I actually want it to fade away. So we'll come to right as we're entering the portal and we're gonna find the refraction setting. I'm gonna click create a keyframe. We'll move forward a little bit and then just fade it out nicely. So as we walk through, that effect should fade away. The next thing I want is a slight blue cast to our footage. So I'm gonna go and find our original mask layer and I'm gonna push K to create another version of that. And this time we'll just call this blue cast. And because this is a clone layer and not a duplicate layer, we can't actually change the color on it. So what we're gonna need to do is go up into our filters, go to color and select colorize. Now I can go ahead and just set this to that blue color and we can go ahead and go into the black settings and make sure that that's completely black so we don't accidentally introduce any colors that we didn't intend. From there, we can go into our property settings and just bring the opacity way, way down. And now, as we're entering the portal, we'll go ahead and create some keyframes so it fades away. So I'll click add a keyframe here, and then we'll go ahead and drag that to zero. So we should now have this effect fade out. Some of these edges are a little bit sharp, but what's great is because everything is based off this original mask, we can actually adjust it without ruining our effect. So I'll go into our shape settings, go to geometry, and I'm just gonna bring up the roundness slider. So now the shape looks a little bit more organic. So I wanna add a lot more depth to this effect. So I wanna create some particles. To do that, we'll go ahead and within our 3D group layer, I'm gonna go ahead and 
create a circle. Um, I'm gonna hold shift so it's a perfect circle and then we'll disable the outline on it. With that circle selected, I'm going to select make particles in the top right. After that, we can come to the left and find the shape settings and change it from point over to geometry. And this is actually where the particles will be emitting from. So we want them to emit from the door. So we'll drag in our original mask and now we can see they're kind of going in the shape of that mask but they're a little bit too far forward. So what we need to do is go into our property settings and we'll find the Z parameter and we're just gonna click and drag that down until we're just in front of the door. Now, if you're struggling to line it up right, you can actually go into the top perspective by clicking this icon and you can see I've actually gone a little bit too far. So I'll just click and drag those out in front of the door, just like so. Now I'm gonna push control A or click up here and select active camera. So now those particles should be coming right out from where the door is. Now we can go into the em emitter settings and enable 3D so that these work in 3D space. Then we can go in and adjust our birth rate settings, our birth rate randomness. We could drag up our initial number if we wanted to start off with several. Then what I recommend is you actually offset the this emitter so we'll find it in our timeline and I'm just gonna slide it over to the left hand side so that it has already emitted particles so that when the scene starts it already looks natural then from there we can adjust our life randomness our speed randomness and moving on down we can enable additive blend which is going to make it so the particles blend nicely when they actually fly over each other then let's go ahead and change the color mode from original over to colorize over life and now we can set the actual colors of these particles. So there's this white bar here and that actually represents the opacity. So go ahead and go to the end and click and we'll create this little opacity slider. And then we can set the opacity on that to zero. So now these particles will slowly fade off as they die out. Now let's go ahead and change the colors over to look like our neon blue color. And we want those to fade out and I kind of like them going into white. So you can see how these particles are actually really flying nicely in 3D space. Let's change the scale randomness and we'll slide the, the scale way down just so these particles are really, really tiny. Then I want these particles to actually glow. So with the emitter selected, we'll go ahead and add a neon effect to these particles. Perfect, so we've got these great looking 3D particles. It's really tying in the scene. So one thing that really ties in CGI is bringing in real life assets and that is where Envato Elements comes in today. Envato Elements is changing the game with their incredible subscription service. They offer unlimited access to over 55 million assets. I don't know if you realize how large of a number that is. It is ginormous. They offer fonts, photos, stock footage, music, sound effects, WordPress themes, Final Cut Pro, and Motion 5 templates. They offer a super simple license and your license still counts even after your subscription has ended. If you follow the link in the description, you will get 50% off when selecting the annual subscription. Do yourself a favor, my friends, level up your video editing library and get Envato Elements today. What we're gonna do is push Command I and I'm going to bring in a nice smoke asset. And I'm going to actually drag this out of all of the groups and just place it on the very top as its own group. Then I'm going to go ahead and scale it way up and then we'll just change the blend mode over to screen. But you'll notice that there's actually some sharp edges. So to fix that, we're gonna need to add a mask. We'll click on this down arrow and select circle mask and then I'm just gonna click and drag and create this really large mask. Then we'll go into our mask settings and drag up the feather like crazy. And so now we've got this great looking smoke asset happening. Now I wanna change the smoke to be that neon blue color so it really looks like it's tying it in. So with the smoke selected, we'll go up to filters, color, colorize. And we'll set the black all the way down to black so we don't bring in some extra color cast. Then we'll set the white over to that neon blue color. And now if we wanted a little bit more control over how the smoke looks, we could actually go into our color and add a contrast effect and bring up the contrast so that we can adjust how much smoke is showing. So that is how you can create a portal effect in Apple Motion. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.